Hey! Declarative programming is great and all, but have you ever wanted to return an HTTP resource from a method? In this video, we do just that and discuss the pros and cons of the declarative versus procedural technique. If you are interested in Angular content, consider subscribing to my channel. Personally, I like declarative programming, so when I started with Signals and HTTP resource, I used a declarative approach. Each of the signals that the application needs are declared here in the service, the list of vehicle models for the select box, and the model the user selected. Our resource is declared here. It issues an HTTP request every time the selected model signal changes. In other words, every time the user selects a different model from the list. And here are the signals provided by the resource. The HTTP response data is in the value signal, any error in the error signal, and the loading indicator is in the is loading signal. However, we don't control when this HTTP request is first issued. Looking at the component, when a component first injects this service, the service is instantiated. Going back to the service, at that point, all of the service variables, including all of our signals, are initialized. And when this resource is initialized, the HTTP request is issued. To see that in action, let's open the browser console and select the Network tab, then Reload, and we see that the code automatically issued the HTTP request with an empty search string. I'll close the browser tools. This may be desired behavior. If there is no selection, get all of the vehicles. But what if that is not what we want? Is there a way to prevent the HTTP request from executing until we want it to? Yep, we can add logic to the HTTP resource. This is an arrow function, so we can write any code here that we want. And it's important to note that if the arrow function returns undefined, it will not issue an HTTP request. Let's use the ternary operator. If this dot selected model signal has a value, then return the URL, otherwise return undefined. Let's try it again. Open the browser console and click reload. Since we have not yet selected a vehicle model, our resource function returns undefined, no HTTP request is sent, and no vehicles are listed. I'll close the browser tools. So we can control when the HTTP request is issued by adding logic to the HTTP resource reactive function. Return undefined and no request is sent, all using a declarative approach. There are several benefits to this declarative approach. Everything we need is declared right here, along with all desired reactivity. For example, this code automatically regets the data whenever the selected model changes. No need to handle UI events or call any methods. And since these are all declared in a service that's provided in root, these signals are available to any part of the application that needs them. But there are some parts of this approach that aren't appealing to everyone. Looking at the component, we have this boilerplate code that simply references the service signals. These signals are then read in the template. What if we'd prefer to work with the resource signals directly in the component? This is especially useful if this is the only component that needs those signals. Going back to the service, I'll remove the private keyword from the resource declaration so the component can access the resource. Then cut the resource signals from here and paste them into the component. Add the needed imports. I'll scroll down to better see the code. Use VS Code multiple cursors to change this.vehicles resource to this.vehicles service.vehicles resource. We don't need these duplicate declarations, so I'll delete them. Trying it out, it still works. But what about these two signals? Could we move them here from the service as well? Going back to the service, 
we could move the vehicle model signal to the component, but the selected model signal is used here in our resource. Let's instead define a method and pass in the required signal. Then return the HTTP resource from that method. That way we can move this signal to the component as well. We start by defining a method in our service. I'll call it getVehicles. We pass in the vehicle model, which is a signal of string. Then we return the HTTP resource. I'll cut it from here and paste it here. Then delete the declaration. Next, we change each selected model signal to the passed in vehicle model signal. An important note here, for the resource reactivity to work properly, the signal must be read within the reactive function. We're reading the signal here and here. If we passed in a string instead of a signal and used the string in the reactive function, this code would no longer be reactive, and it would not issue an HTTP request when the user selects a vehicle model. Feel free to try that out. OK, now we don't need these signals here. We can move them to the component, add the missing import, and delete the duplicate signal declarations. Our last step is to call our method vehicles resource equals this dot vehicle service dot get vehicles and pass in our signal this dot selected model. Be sure to pass the signal and not the value of the signal. Now we can fix our references here. And done! Our component now manages all of the signals it needs. Going back to the service, it no longer declares our signals. Instead, it encapsulates our resource. Other components could use this service, passing in a different signal. Let's try it out. Open the browser console, click Reload, and we don't see an HTTP request because our initial vehicle model is an empty string. Select a vehicle model. The HTTP resource reacts to the change in the passed in signal and retrieves the desired data. It works! Yay! Use the declarative approach we started with, declaring signals in the service, if you want to share those signals across multiple components. Use the procedural approach if you only need the signals in one component and prefer to have that component manage its own signals. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful, please like and subscribe.